Wow, thank you very much. Uh, my congratulations to all of our panelists, all of our moderators, and to Dr. Yamin, uh, to you and your team for putting on, organizing, and conceiving of such a remarkable program. Well, I wanted not just to close out the day, but, you know, as I sat here on the first day and looked at the questions that Dr. Yamin was asking, and I know that we had different levels of familiarity with the Women, Peace, and Security program and the U.S. law related to Women, Peace, and Security but I saw that some people may have had apprehension about the day, uh, about the two-day program that we had, about dedicating time to women, peace, and security. And so I realize that I may want to offer at this time, if anyone has a question for me uh, related to this seminar or why we came together, uh, and organized something so large and so potentially powerful about women, peace, and security. And so I'd invite uh, a question for me from the audience or two from the audience. Uh, if you have a question for me, uh, please let me know. Okay, I don't see one there. I know uh, we're coming up on the lunch hour. And as usual, I will uh, remain in the front uh, after my remarks in case anybody would like to approach me and have maybe a more private exchange. So I have a lot of gratitude for what happened here over the past two days. First of all, I wanna commend our CNO Distinguished International Fellows for demonstrating their time and attention to this issue. So if you're a person representing your military service here at the Naval War College, I would invite you to consider three former heads of their navies and coast guards and their commitment to understanding more about women, peace and security. So thank you gentlemen for being here. I'd also like to thank our provost, Dr. Stephen Mariano, for his wonderful opening remarks to put this uh, Women, Peace, and Security Conference into context, both in a personal and in a professional point of view. It's the law. Thank you. Thank you so much. During our discussions, we have come to understand the significant role that women play in peace building and conflict pre prevention. And we've also heard about the meaningful participation of women in the security and defense sectors. We have learned about the importance of gender inclusive approaches in building a sustainable peace. We've heard that there are challenges facing women in conflict zones and that there is a crucial need to incorporate these perspectives into planning for and resolving conflict. We've also examined the role of women in post-conflict reconstruction and the challenges they face in rebuilding lives and communities. And when I reflect on these conversations, I'm reminded of a recent talk where General Jackie Van Ovost, commander of U.S. Transportation Command, said that when we get beyond the first and only, uh, that woman was the first to attain this. That woman was the first to achieve that. When we get past that, we will be left with a professional military ready to get after all of the facets of our business. 
And uh, I've got a, the actual quote that she made here, so I'll read it verbatim. We will be left with a professional military ready to get after the needs of the nation with highly talented, diverse and capable people before us, beside us and behind us. And I would say that this is exactly what the Women, Peace and Security agenda seeks to achieve. Now, as I said that out loud, I know that for some people, the term agenda is actually pretty provocative. It might make a person feel like there's something being advanced that they might not fully believe in or espouse. And so uh, I understand, even as I said it, and we heard Dr. Yamin say, women, peace, and secure, security agenda over and over and over, that we are, in fact, talking about a Security Council resolution, a United States law strategy and implementation plan when we have used that term. When I think about the representation of general officers here, when I think about our defense groups that came, our ambassadors, when I think about our panelists who are combat experienced, and I think about these perspectives that came to the stage. I think that we can leave this symposium having been enriched by topics very relevant to national and regional and global security. So I want to thank you again for your participation here. And as I reflect back on my career, as a Navy logistics pilot. I think about the teams that I've been part of and the experiences that I've had. I didn't have the skills when I first arrived in the military. I had, wasn't used to memorizing things by rote. So it was hard for me to change from concepts to emergency procedures. It was hard for me to change from thinking about frameworks in international relations and political science and the work that I'd done uh, in language. It's hard for me to focus on the minute details of the systems of the helicopters I flew. But I've also learned that it is far easier to learn about helicopter systems and to troubleshoot a failing helicopter system than it is to truly understand people, especially as people come together and represent themselves and usually something else in a group. But the Navy that I joined is a Navy that's about high performing teams. And I think that's something that resonates with all of us that have been interested in de defense and security. To develop and to learn to lead high performing teams. And so these concepts that were discussed, especially in this last panel, but over these last several days, are very important to each of our successes. And so as we go, I just want to thank you all for placing your attention on this topic and for participating in this conference here at the Naval War College. I'm grateful to know you and to meet you, and I wish you every success as you move forward. Thank you.